But the U.S. Uh, has vetoed a third U.N. Security Council resolution that demands an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. The Biden administration says it's concerned the resolution would interfere with hostage negotiations between Israel and Hamas. CBS News senior foreign correspondent Holly Williams is in Tel Aviv. Holly, uh, great to see you. The U.S. is proposing its own draft resolution for a ceasefire in Gaza. How is this proposal any different from the Algerian draft that the U.N. voted on and that the U.S. Uh, vetoed this morning? Hey there, Lilia. Yeah, this is quite a complicated diplomatic story, but it's really important. The U.S. vetoed that draft U.N. security resolution today, effectively blocking a demand for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in the war. The U.S. was very much in the minority. Thirteen other member states voted in favour. The U.K. Uh, did not vote. It set out the vote and the U.S. voted against it. But the U.S. has the veto power because it's one of the five permanent members of the Security Council. The U.S. ambassador called the vote wishful and irresponsible and said that it put sensitive uh, negotiations in jeopardy. Now, I think for many people that will be puzzling because we know that the U.S. has been pushing hard for a ceasefire, has been involved in ceasefire negotiations. Negotiations. So why the veto um, and why that language? Language. Well, the U.S. ambassador also said, quote, demanding an unconditional ceasefire without requiring Hamas to release the hostages will not bring about a durable peace. As we know, there are thought to be around 130 hostages still being held by the militants inside the Gaza Strip. We understand that the U.S. is proposing uh, a rival draft resolution at the Security Council that would provide for a temporary ceasefire, the release of all the remaining hostages, mm. as well as the lifting of all rest restrictions on humanitarian aid going into the Gaza Strip. So, yes, the U.S. does want a ceasefire, but it doesn't want that ceasefire. Mm. And one of its key concerns is getting all of those hostages out. Right. So centering the hostages. Um, and, and speaking of the hostages, I understand you've been talking to families, I mean, ongoing since the beginning of the conflict. Um, but I understand that there is a new video that has surfaced showing one of the families that had everybody concerned, the Bebas family. Talk to us about why this video is significant now. What's the timing and what are people speculating from it? It was actually the Israeli military that released this video uh, last night. It's, uh, it seems to be security camera video. Uh, the Israeli military says that it found it in recent days uh, in the southern part of the Gaza Strip. And it apparently shows the Bibas family on the same day that they were kidnapped from their kibbutz, October 7th, mm. being moved around by militants inside the Gaza Strip. Now, the, the members of the Bibas family are Kafir Bibas. He was nine months old at the time, the youngest hostage. hostage. His four-year-old brother, Ariel, and their parents, Shiri and Yad. And you might remember the video of Shiri being kidnapped, holding her two yeah. very young uh, boys. It was really distressing. Back in November, um, at about the same time that Hamas released around 100, 100 hostages during a week-long ceasefire, Hamas also said claimed that Shiri and the two boys had been killed in an airstrike, mm -hmm. but they didn't provide any proof and they certainly haven't provided the bodies. Now, we've been in contact uh, with, with the, the other members of the family since October and we spoke to one of the cousins of Shiri this week uh, before this video was released and she told us that they're going to keep on fighting, they're going to keep on believing until they get confirmation that those family members have been killed. Mm. Holly Williams, thank you.